In this video, I'm going to be talking about landing, looting, and inventory management. Now, there are a lot of new players in Apex right now, and there are a ton that are also returning, and there are just players who've been playing for some time and still don't really understand how this stuff works. So let's get right into it. Now, let's start off with how to land properly. Now, there are really two different examples here that I'm going to cover, when you're contested and when you're uncontested but there are gonna be some nuances with each one. So let's start off with being uncontested. Let's say you and your squad, whether you're playing with friends or you're playing with randoms, are being uncontested and you're landing in a POI. The goal here should be so that you guys all split up among your each respective area within the POI. Now, if it's a really large POI like Skyhook or something, then you definitely wanna use your discretion here to look around to see if a team went countdown or potentially survey camp or any of the nearby POIs that might venture into Skyhook, especially if the zone ends up pulling to that area. You don't want to be landing too far away from one another, but you want to give yourself enough area so that you're not looting on top of one another. Far too often, players will just land in the same exact area and that screws one another up. Most of you know this because there's only so many loot paths, right? And if two of you are looting the same path, that just means there's less to go around. It's a really simple concept. However, one of the worst parts about Apex is that people who are the jump master can't force the players to break off from them. It works the other way around. So if you aren't the jump master, you're able to break off as soon as you want and land in the area that you want to go into. What usually screws up players, particularly while solo queuing, is they'll be the jump master, they'll ping a spot that they want to land to, they are uncontested, and then one or two of their randoms land right on top of them, and it just screws them over. And in these situations, look, there's really nothing you can do except start to run in a different direction and hopefully loot your own respective area. If players are paying attention though, splitting up helps you because the sooner you guys all get looted up, the sooner you can either move on to rotate if you need to, or look for a fight if that's what you want to do. The point here is that you want to make this as efficient as possible, and that starts with looting your respective areas and then meeting up after 60 to 90 seconds or so, depending on when you need to leave and what you're planning to do next. If it's a smaller POI, then this may be a little bit more difficult. Say it's a POI like Geyser. Well, someone should land in the back, and then the other two should split the U-shaped buildings. Now, when it comes to being contested, I want to preface with, well, it really depends on where the enemy team is landing, and let's just assume for simplicity's sake, it's a 50-50. You know, your team and the enemy team. Now, with each POI, there will be differences here that you want to evaluate, and there's not a one-size-fits-all approach because the enemy team could land in one spot in one one match and you could have a good counter to that but then in the next match they land in a totally different way and that screws up how you wanted to land or that you were used to landing oh and one really important factor that every player on the team must learn to do is free look around while they drop now, i've been preaching this for years now but it's something that will give you the information about where you should land and where your enemies are landing as well if you're not free looking you're really just putting blinders on and that's just going to negatively affect your gameplay because it's going to affect the lack of information you have about your surroundings. You need to learn to free look while still dropping. Too many players give me the excuse of like, well, I'm jump master, so I can't look around. Wrong. You need to build this skill up. You can focus on your drop and focus on free looking at the same time. You're going to have to balance it more so than the person who may not be jump master, but it's still a skill you want to develop and enhance, especially if you solo queue because you can't just count on your randoms to free look and communicate to you what they're seeing and whatnot. So free looking is of the utmost importance. Now back to the contest. Now speaking broadly, here there are three things that i always look out for when it comes to a contest now first is i always want to see if i can land in some sort of high ground obviously high ground will give you a positional advantage in a fight but it also lets you see a lot more regarding your surroundings for example a top of a building will give you a better vantage point to see out regarding your next move second is if i'm landing in an area where i could get pinched could be trapped and when I say trapped, I imagine either getting surrounded by multiple enemies or multiple teams, or even just trapped from the map. Now, this would be mostly applicable in an edge POI like Climatizer, Dome, anything where the map is just going to run out of space. If things go bad and you don't have a good area to fall back to, that could wind up harming you. And third is I always want to land right on something that I can quickly access a chance at a weapon or two. I don't want to land, then have to run 30 feet to the nearest loot spawn and have my enemy already get shots at me before I've even got to a place where a weapon could spawn. Now you obviously can't control weapon spawns, but you can go to the places where loot does spawn and that will give you the highest chance of success. Of course, we've all landed on a bin and got two sniper stocks and a frag grenade while our enemy opened another bin and got a Mastiff and an R301. But what I'm really talking about is you don't want to land in a spot, waste time running to the nearest loot spawn because either you weren't paying attention or 
yeah, it really will just come down to paying attention. Because some players who are new aren't going to necessarily know where all the loot spawns are. And that will just take time to build up. But through experience, you will gather that and you will know, okay, there are pills here. Okay, loot spawns here on the ground, things of that nature. But assuming you already have that awareness, really try to think about these three things. Now, in most situations where you get contested in a certain POI, you want to think about what area can you and your teammates occupy. And basically, you kind of want to be a little greedy here. If you got to split this one POI among six players, your team versus their team, and you don't want to give them more space than your team occupies. This isn't always something you can control, but it's something you want to look out for. If you see a team that is sticking together right up until the landing, then that jump master is going to land those other two players wherever they go. And that could be super beneficial to you and your squad if you pick up on it and if you choose to land in your own desired location, which is what I'm recommending to do. You'll see in this clip here where we land at the wall POI on Storm Point, I told my teammates, watch where they go and try to take as much space as you can. So basically we got one side of the wall, which is two buildings, and two different sections of pills. And they got the same thing, relatively speaking, but they all landed on one building with the pills outside of it. So that helped us because they didn't really split up their landing at all. And so we knew to move on them rather quickly and roll the dice, assuming that not only did we have better loot, but we had more space and we had a great idea of where they all were at and where they'd be heading to next because i would assume one or two players wouldn't find enough loot which would mean they would try to run to that back right building and that got them split up this made it really simple for us to attack them and gave us some extra confidence and this is something that the best players use against their opponents so i'm telling you to use it against yours now when it comes to landing with more than one other team this could be considered a hot drop where you land with three or more teams in one POI. And there's a couple different ways to play this. Of course, if it's in ranked, I'll just straight up say, this is rarely a good idea to do, as each team is generally gonna be thinking, uh, yeah, let's let the other two teams fight first and then we'll third party. This can create a stalemate among all of the teams and where no one ends up really fighting and then no one has a lot of loot or maybe your team just doesn't have a lot of loot and this will screw you up the rest of your game because you may not find a lot of other opportunities to gather loot except from just fighting. Now, if it's a pub and you just wanna get into some action and get your hands dirty, well, really think about two things. Can you land on the edge of the POI and work your way in so that you're not forced to fight if you don't find good loot. This is the more passive approach, but it's also more strategic. But there is also the approach of just landing in the middle of that thing and getting right into it and seeing if you can fight your way out. This can be fun to pull off with friends, but most of the time with randoms, it will go poorly, at least in my experience. Sure, maybe one out of 10 games, you'll frag out and you'll make it out of that POI and you'll carry your randoms through that hot drop. But for the most part, you'll be stuck having to try to 1v9 with just like one weapon and two shield cells. So it can get pretty rough. But if you're gonna hot drop, really think about where everybody's going and think about how big the POI is in the event that you can't get your weapon, where you're landing, where will you move to next, so on and so forth. Okay, now let's get into inventory management. Now, inventory management will scale up as you progress throughout the match because ultimately, the longer you stay alive, theoretically, the more loot you'll find and the more your loot will upgrade. Now, let's say we're starting into a match. Two cells, two syringes, no weapon, no backpack, white armor, white helmet. Okay, I'm going to start off. I find a triple take and then I find an R99. So with the R99, I'll probably find 40 ammo and with the triple take, I'll probably find 20. So you can see here, I've got 10 slots. And basically what I wanna think about is what's my primary and what's my secondary. So in most examples, the triple take will probably be the primary unless a lot of the fights I wind up in are close range, but I don't necessarily always get to control that. So that's why I'm starting triple take and weapon one. Now it doesn't really matter where the weapon is, whether it's one or two. I mean, it kind of does, but you can always swap it if you want. So for a weapon like the triple take, an ideal amount, because it's a single fire gun, I probably want something like 120. That would take up two squares. So you can see 60 in each. 120 is a good amount, especially as I don't have a ton of backpack space. But let's say I do grab a white backpack over here and I get two extra slots with that. I still will probably continue to carry 120. 180 will be the highest I'll go with the triple take because keep in mind, it's a single fire gun. That's 180 shots. That's a ton of shots. I don't need that much. And I probably will get a kill before I would ever extend even half of that amount of ammo so I could just find more ammo if needed. Or if everybody I killed and came across didn't have energy ammo, I could swap weapons. But that's like such a far-fetched thing to run out of this amount. Now, changing guns for a second, if I had a nemesis, 
I would burn 120 ammo much faster. So my ideal loadout would probably be more like 180 at the minimum, but 240 is probably something I'd be really comfortable with. Because very quickly, I can extend a whole magazine and burn 20 bullets. And that's without a magazine on my gun. Now, going back to the triple take example and holding 120 ammo, I obviously want to look for the necessary attachments that I'm going to come across. So something like an optic. Okay, I find a 3X, white stock, and I've yet to find a magazine. But for this R9, and the R9 right now is very weak. Regardless, I'm looking for a magazine, a stock, and laser sight, maybe a sight. All right, I need a lot of light ammo because this is going to burn ammo fast. So how much should I be looking for? 180, 240 maybe. 240 is a lot for my secondary, but this leaves me with four extra slots. Now keep in mind with small heels, they're all stacked in even numbers. So I can hold four, and that's the same as holding two. Same with syringes, four. Now. My rough rule of thumb for shields to health is I want a two to one ratio. So I want like eight cells, four syringes. Now, if I don't have any big heals, like med kits or batteries, or I guess even a Phoenix kit, but I'll get the Phoenix kit in a second here. If I don't have any big heals, then I wanna use the slot in which the big heal would take up for the small heals, at least temporarily. So for instead of holding eight cells, I'll be looking for 12. Now, if I can get a battery, great. Now med kit, great. I don't necessarily need to drop these four cells unless I want a grenade or an ultimate accelerant, something of that nature, something that would take the utility here. But I could also, because I'm running this R9 and 240 bullets is a lot, I could drop the 60 light and carry a grenade. This could also take the place of a Phoenix kit if you want, but if it was up to me, I might drop the four cells in exchange for the Phoenix kit. This is a variable, okay? It will alter throughout the game. It will change. It'll be something that you'll use your discretion. But right now, this inventory looks pretty good. One thing I also want to keep in mind is that as I go throughout the game, having only one battery is a vulnerable spot to be in. So I want to keep my eyes peeled for another shield battery as well as a med kit. So I'm already carrying one. I can carry two. It takes the same amount of space. But for the shield battery, it's the same concept. It's just that this is really, really important to have more than one. Because if you don't have any, that time to heal gets extended by a lot. And that could take you out the fight. That could make you lose the fight. So it's something you want to keep your eyes peeled for. As soon as I get a squad wipe and I'm in the death box and I only have one battery, I'm scouring those boxes for the batteries. I want to make sure that I get one for my random teammates gobble them all up. Now let's say I've got the blue bag now. So I've got more space. Two bats, 12 cells. I have one grenade. So here I can flex if I want to carry more grenades, which I probably will with this loadout. I'm going to look for at least one more. And then on this extra slot, I can decide do I want ammo? Do I find more bats? Because ideally, four bats is a really comfortable spot to be in. Four is like the perfect amount for me. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'd take more if I could, but having four is really, really comfortable. Now, if I find more bats at this stage, this is something I've talked about before and some people have argued with me. If I find more bats here, then I'm gonna drop the cells. I don't need as many cells if I've got the shield batteries to make up for it. However, if I lose those bats, this is still a really comfortable position to be in for heals. Now, let's switch guns for a second. Pretend I'm back on the Nemesis. All right, now I've got to upgrade the ammo and I'm probably gonna drop a little light in exchange because the light is a secondary 120, that's fine. I'm looking for 240 on the Nemesis, maybe even 300, depending on if it's a ranked game and I may not know the next time I'll be able to get loot if it's getting towards that later stage. So the universal concepts you can apply regardless of your loadout is that you really want to strive for four bats, two med kits, eight to 12 cells, I'll say, and four syringes. You never need to carry more syringes unless, of course, you know, you've got a long rotation in the zone and you're like, damn, I really need health. In that case, I'd probably drop a nade and I'd stack up on extra syringes so that when I come out of zone, hopefully I'm still sitting around four and two for the health. I'll burn these four extra syringes while I'm in zone. Now, of course, if I if I couldn't find any med kits, right, then I might carry eight syringes, maybe. Depends on the zone, depends on how much zone damage I think I'll take. But chances are, if I'm carrying more than four syringes, I'm doing something wrong. Besides that one example I just gave, you're never gonna need to heal eight syringes without dying first, most likely. Like you're dead before you're gonna heal that much. Remember, your shield gets hit first, so that's why you want more shields than your health. But if you are stuck in zone and you're rotating, you need to pay attention to health. And this is just a metric that you always want to look for. It's a baseline thing. Every time you're looting a death box, every time you're looting around, you wanna make sure that you're sitting around these numbers. You don't wanna get caught in zone and be like, damn, I totally forgot and neglected to pick up health and now I'm just gonna die. You don't wanna be one of those players. Now let's talk about a different loadout real quick. Let's say I'm running Peacekeeper as my secondary. So I'm looking for 16 shells. 32 would be the absolute maximum for a shotgun. I rarely carry 32 though. 16 is just fine. That's enough for one fight and then some. 
And let's say I am running Havoc, probably going 300 on the energy because I've then subtracted some of the inventory space for the secondary weapon, like the R9, right? Because the R9 I was carrying anywhere from 120 to 180, which would take up three slots, two to three slots. Now being on the Peacekeeper, I don't need to do that so I can make up for it in other areas, which I'm going to choose to do that with the energy ammo. And I'm going to choose to do that with shields and grenades and maybe an ultimate accelerant if I can find one. So now I've got three nades. I'm going to go for two more bats and I've still got an extra slot and this is on purple, right? So this is like the most comfortable you'll be when you have the best backpack. Obviously gold is a little bit better, but it doesn't give you more space. It just allows for you to carry more big heels. Now I've got all of this and this is really, really comfortable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested, be sure to check out all of the habits that are holding you back in Apex Legends. I covered it in this video here. Peace.